Oh, hello. Fancy seeing you here. Um, so, I normally start these vlogs by having a coffee in the house, but um, I didn't today because I'm doing something different. So today, I've already done my post, which was a one whole item, a £30 sale, but never mind. And um, instead of wandering around Bridgend so much, I think I might take a trip and go to Cowbridge, which is like the next kind of town along. So I'll have a quick shifty around the Bridgend charity shops, and then I'm going to go to Cowbridge and see what is there. Cowbridge is a bit posher than Bridgend, so hopefully we might find something nice. You never know. So that's the one we want, that's the Cardiff X2 bus, coming in seven minutes, and this is Bridgend bus station. Um, if you want drugs, go to those toilets there, or to that pub over there, <sighs> gotta love Bridgend. Wow, the excitement of an X2 bus. Oh, that's cool how it's doing that. It's because my frame rate, no, my refresh rate on the phone is flickering at a different oh, time. Oh, there's something to do with filmmaking that I once learned and I've now forgotten. Never mind. Ta -da. Off the bus and in Cowbridge. So this is like a farmer's kind of town, so it's literally one street pretty much. But there's lots of lovely posh things to look at, believe it or not, you know it's close to Bridgend. And um, little back streets and a lovely little antiques place and some charity shops. And this is gonna be the first one I go into, which is a tea haven, like a boutique kind of shop. It's very, very expensive. Yeah, you might have seen that I just saw a £49.99 vintage Jaeger coat. Way too expensive. But here I am outside the Elephant and Bun Delicatessen. Um, awesome little place. They sell some proper yummy stuff in there. Um, I might go in and purchase some. You never know. So this is kind of cool, this is 23B High Street, Cowbridge, and this is a pop-up shop, so you can rent this for literally a couple of months at a time, and my friend Mike Foreman, who runs the Vintage HQ in, uh, well, in Bridgend area, he normally rents this up coming up to Christmas to sell loads of fur coat and stuff. Cenotaph from the town hall and then next up we're going to go to Emmaus which is my favourite place. So I spent £15.80 in the last charity shop. Over the road is Cats Protection League. And they are mega expensive, but it's lots of designer gear in there. So I'll, I'll have a quick look, but I don't think there'll be anything. And on this side of the road is Dogs Trust, which can be a little bit pricey, but they sometimes get a couple of nice things in there. So you never know, we'll see what's in. I rather scarily just spent £77 in dog trust on jewellery. So people are looking at me weird, it's fine, it's fine. 
So I'm gonna go into Costa and get myself a coffee. There's one coconut milk latte. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. And then here's a little peak. And the very last place I'm going to today, Happy Days Vintage Shop, and I'll show you this in a minute, is my favourite place in Cowbridge. I freaking love this place. This is what I wanted miscellaneous to be like when we were in the shop. This place is awesome. I'll show you inside now. It's very cool. Cycles or G Pan G Plans tile furniture here as well. It's very cool. There's so much. And that's a little cafe down there. All homemade stuff is lovely. There's also awesome little record shop in here as well. Very cool. Lots of vintage glassware. And then lots of clothing as well. They have a couple of clothing sellers. And do you know what? My clothing in my shop was, well, I don't want to say better, but I certainly had lots of lovely stuff, or lots more lovely stuff. And I could rent a place here, I suppose. But it's just whether I could be bothered and have the time to do it again. And I'm just gonna get on the bus back home. Oh been nice. got a message okay stop go, go, go away sorry um so I'm back home now and um, I'm kind of pleased with my day I've got to get ready for work this afternoon but before I do all of that I'm going to show you excitingly what I bought so um oh actually I'll show you my outfit first and my hair you can see my hair isn't it cool it's a good match I'm really I kind of like it yeah um so I did a Primark haul the other day, and this is what I'm wearing from there. Can you see? Probably not. Hello. <laughs> so I'm wearing my pink cord skirt, and then the little kind of mod. Oh my god, it's a bit see-through. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh well. Um, oops. Sorry, I'm still going to wear this to work. I don't care. Right. Um, I'd quickly like to say thank you to my 1,000 odd subscribers. 
I know I haven't done a woo 1000 subscribers let's have a giveaway kind of thing um, and that's mainly just because I've been really freaking miserable um, I wouldn't say why but like shit's going down and I've been kind of horrible and miserable and <sighs> all of that um, but it's gonna get sorted out it's gonna be okay and so I'm gonna be happy and jolly and weird and all of the things that you people expect from me hopefully maybe um, yeah and all blue hair and shit and I'm gonna show you what I bought anyway so let's not uh, stay with a miserable because everything's gonna be okay so first purchase that I bought was from Bridgend um, from Bernardo's and this is 99 pence as you can see on there and it's rather unusual mug a uh, cup and saucer with a lovely tea stain in the middle of it um, made in England gorgeous green colour Johnson Brothers made in England Ironside um, and as you can see it's like squares which, that's the reason I picked it up, because I just thought it looks a bit unusual. A bit Art Deco, or a bit 1960s even. Like, very Art Deco kind of handle. So, I like that. I quickly tried to look it up, but I couldn't find anything similar at all. So, because there's nothing similar, I'm going to stick it on for like £12, because I can. Okay. Mm. Next thing I bought, when we got to Cowbridge in Emmaus was this bunch of um, fox hunting scene um, like placemats which are in good condition but it doesn't I don't think it says actually who they're by like who made them because obviously like this gold leaf and this uh, pimpernel and stuff but I don't think these have got oh they signed though so that's cool Wilco perhaps um, no, so I can't see anything on the back to give me a clue as to who they are, but obviously I can search for the artist name and see if that's a thing. They cost me £4. Um, I'm going to stick them on for about 25 because fox hunting scenes are popular. And it's not surprising that I found these in Cowbridge because Cowbridge is a fox hunting town. Um, they do one on Boxing Day and it always gets like protests and stuff. I'm quite right too. Yes. Next thing I bought from there, which was a dud. Hooray! £4.60 I spent on this. Um, I didn't get any phone reception while I was in Cowbridge, so I was a bit stuck on this one. But I thought I'd go for it anyway because the worst thing that's going to happen is I'll sell it on for a fiver. But it, it's all still sealed. There you go, the sticks, they're like shaky stick thing. Like. I'm not very good at that. And um, the DVDs are all, I think, well, they're all there, and then that one's still sealed. So I figured for a fiver it's worth a go. Look, I've completed the sales, and some of them sold for a fiver. Hooray! Some of them sold for a tenner. I'm obviously going to stick it on for 15 and hope for the best. Next things I bought from there, Nick keeps going on about big box PC games. So I bought two big box PC games. Um, they were a pound each. And then I did manage to look these up while I was uh, having my coffee in Costa. And as long as they've got all of the bits inside, which I'll check later, but they should go for about £18 each. So that's not so bad. Okay. And then my big spend. Um, I spent over £80 on jewellery again. But instead of a big bag like this full of costume crap, it's this not a lot at all. Maybe, hold on there a second, I might move you down here. Hold on. Bear with, bear with. God, I really do, I'm doing a collar and I really do need to cut my fringe. Okay, come with me a second. Oh, that's really not attractive angle at all for me, is it? Okay. I don't know. Oh God, it doesn't matter, does it? Anyways, so, bag of jewellery, so you can see the now. My chin. Pretties! Look at all of the pretties. Okay. So. 
in one shop in I think it was ten of us, which I didn't show you because my battery was just about to run out, was these vintage clip-on earrings, which are rather fabulous and insane. They're not silver, but I think they are like a pewter. Um and they're they're completely off. I'll see if I can try them on. Wow. They're bonkers. I love them. So they're three pounds and I'm going to try and get about, I reckon about 15 for them because they're kind of cool and unusual. Like me and shit. Um, the next thing I got was this little brooch which was two pounds I think. I think that's about the average sort of what I would spend on brooches and they're so freaking beautiful. The reason I got this one is because it's quite pretty and floral and there's like a uh, little bit of marker seat in there, which is quite nice. Marker seat to the tiny little like squarish stones. Let's get me loop out. But it is signed on the back, so I'm just going to check who it is signed by. Bloody hell, can't see a thing. It's too bright now. Genuinely can't see that. Mirella. Mirelli. Mirelli. Nirelli. I'll look that up later and see if that's a thing. But, but quite cute, two pounds, that's gotta be, say, eight, ten pound there. Okay, and then also I bought some, okay, what was this one? Okay, this was two pounds, and this is also signed Exquisite. That is a vintage brand as well. So it's quite worn, but that's, I think that's quite nice. That's like a, for autumn, a nice statement. Uh, leaf brooch, quite cute and then I bought these two for 50 pence each they are broken because they've got no backs to them but I think I've got some spare backs so I can fix them but I thought the stones in there were worth saving anyway because they're really pretty so I reckon I can fix them they're not signed but they have got some age to them and they are quite nice so worth fixing those I think okay let me this is a completely unattractive. Um, you can't see me either. There we go. That's maybe a bit better. Okay. So that's from the other shop, and then I spent seventy-seven pounds in the Dogs Trust, and they were just putting out a lo whole load of jewelry, and they let me have a go through it, and then they kind of totted up a total for me. And it does sound like a lot, but it is because I bought quite a bit of it, uh, quite a bit, and quite a bit of it is either signed or silver or both, which is quite nice. So let's get some stuff out because I've completely forgotten what I've bought and it's all tangled together and stuff. Okay, we'll start with my most expensive item. So I spent £10 on this, but it is absolutely beautiful. It's like a Macintosh or Macintosh style, Macintosh design silver bracelet as you can see there's like is it enamel yeah it's like silver and then it's been like painted over with like a clear enamel so that's like the macintosh rose uh design it is stamped 925 i wonder if it's stamped macintosh get my loop out <coughs> disco okay Okay, it's stamped 95, I can see that, but it's got something else next to it. Which looks like an M. MG maybe? Oh no, MC. M, probably MC for Macintosh. So that's good that it comes from, hopefully Macintosh, the company themselves, and not it's not just a rip-off. So I reckon 30 quid on that one because it's really super duper pretty. <coughs> oh God, I'm gonna get coughing fit now, aren't I? The next most expensive item, and this was one that I kind of felt a little bit, I didn't really want it in the end, because I wanted, I thought that it was four pound in the cabinet, but it was actually seven pounds, seven pound 50. It is terribly pretty, but it's probably not, I probably shouldn't have spent seven pound 50. I would have preferred it to be four pound, but never mind. But it's this lovely kind of milfoy, milfoy, milfoy. Don't know how you say it. Um, in a spiral, so that's kind of 
Um, apparently it's a ta oh no, it's not milfoy. It's actually dried flowers encased like in acrylic. You can't see that. <coughs> Does that help? No. Okay. I can't see a stamp on it. Oh no, there, there is on the clasp. It says 925, but that just could just mean the chain or the clasp. I reckon that is silver, but that is quite pretty, and I reckon I can get about 15, 20 on that one. <coughs> Damn, I'm going to have a coughing fit now. Okay. Speaking of milfoy, Little hat pin, which is kind of cute. I think she only charged me a pound for that one, because it's, you know, it's probably, well, it might be vintage, but I don't. It is proper stuff, though. I'll get a few quid on that one anyway. It's not overly exciting. I've had a thing about opals recently. And I really kind of like seeing opals. This. Okay. So a little brooch with an opal centre. And then two little like crystal type stones. <coughs> it is signed. Should we see what it's signed? Or well, maybe uh, that might not be a signature actually. That might just be a little fault in the casting of it. Oh no. No, it says silver. <laughs> Maybe that's like um gold plated silver perhaps. But that's really super pretty, like a little bar brooch. Quite nice. I paid three pounds for that one. I reckon that's gotta be a tenner in that. No, at least because it's got an opal in it. Okay. A little cameo brooch was two pounds. It's only from Marks and Spencers, but it's vintage Marks and Sparks. And that's still quite pretty. Cameos are always nice. This crazy brutalist. This was £4. Quite expensive for me to pay for a brooch. But I thought that was so unusual. Brutalist style. Modernist. All of that shenanigans. I should be able to get about £12 for that, I think. This is a crazy one as well. So this was £3. Not signed. Nope. But massive crescent moon brooch. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, I reckon probably about twelve, thirteen pound for that one as well. That's cool. I'm not sure if this is vintage, but it um, came from the same person that donated all of this stuff, so it might be. But like a little Egyptian head kind of thing. That's just a pendant, so I'll have to find a little necklace to put that on. I'll test it for silver, but it's not hallmark, so I, I don't think it is. But it's still kind of cool. That's got to be eight, ten pound. This brooch was £3, I think, and this is Sphinx, which is a vintage make. Again, kind of brutalist in style, very unusual. It's not silver, it's just a, of a silver colour. Um, all Sphinx stuff is signed with like a number on the back, so you might be able to see that. So, um, they don't always sign it Sphinx. They could just sign it with a number. So if you see a bit of jewellery with a number on the back, it's probably Sphinx which is a good vintage brand. This necklace I picked up because I saw that it was signed. Hang on, let me untangle. Oh, bloody hell. So the worst thing about buying jewellery is it gets all tangled. Come on, there we go. Okay, so I saw this necklace, not with this hanging bit on it, which I thought was quite pretty enough anyway. And then I saw a little hanging tag, a little diamond shaped hanging tag, which is important. And I know that that is Sarah Coventry. So Sarah Coventry is, uh, it's Canadian seven Sarah Co Coventry apparently. Or is that just Sarah Coventry, Canada? Is she Canadian? I didn't know that. Okay. Um, but yeah, pretty enough little wire wrapped faux pearl necklace. Sarah Coventry, that's got to get me about £15, I think. A little um, marker seat bracelet, which the clasp, I think, uh, is the hallmark. No, I can't see a hallmark on it, but that was quite cute. I think she charged me £2 for that, just simple marker seat bracelet, quite cute. Oh, a little, okay, £2. For a little hobby horse style hat pin, I think that's freaking adorable. So that's got to be a tenner there, surely, because it's quite unusual. 
a enamel flower brooch that's uh is it fish and crown no it's not it's squiggly line i can't remember who squiggly line is it's not fish and crown anyway or maybe that's another signature of this but anyway these standard go for around about 10 pound anyway so two pounds ten pound they're not the greatest margins for some of these bro brooches but i don't care <laughs> This is a nice little necklace. I spent three pound on this one. This has got like a mother of pearl inlay in there. And again, this looks like it's signed somewhere. Let's have a look. It's signed on the clasp. It says something on the clasp. RG. So we'll look up RG later and see if that's a thing. So it probably is. Always good to have a signed bit of jewelry. So I'll check that out. Three pounds, that's gotta be about 15, surely. A pair of 95 silver snake earrings. They're kind of mad, aren't they? So I really like them. I'm going to stick like 12, 15 pound on them. I think I paid two quid. This is gorgeous. So a little lizard. And he stamped on the back, so it's sterling silver. Not like that necessarily means much because it could just come from China and just be stamped. But it is really handsome. He is lovely and he's got a lovely marker seat on him and green eyes. Like me. Can't see him very well. But I think he's freaking cool. So £7. I'm going to put 20 quid on him and hope for the best. A ring for a pound. This is brutalist in style. It's adjustable, thankfully. So it's not like a sovereign. It's just like some weird kind of meshed up cross thing. But that was cool. I'm going to stick that on for £12, I reckon, because it's brutalist. This one was £2. I thought it had broken then, but it's not. So a little hummingbird, again, with marker seat in there. That's got to get me, like, £10, £12. That's really cute. I love this one. Okay, this was £3. So a little umbrella and a little handbag. And all of this is genuine, like, that's proper stitching in there. And that is absolutely adorable. It's not signed or stamped or anything. So I don't know if it has a maker. But that is so super cute and unusual. That's got to go for about £12, £15, I think. Okay. This one. So we've got a rose with abalone shell in there. Abalone is like, um, you see that a lot in, like, Mexican silver stuff. It is signed N U N I C D U N I C D U S I C Who knows? That'll take some research, but I'm sure I'll find something out there similar. That cost me three pounds, that's gotta be about twelve pounds that I think. Especially if I find out who it actually is. We've got a little pendant here, little unicorn. Which is stamped, stamped to silver. Yep, stamped to silver. It's got a B and B hallmark and a lion, an anchor, a lion, and a U. So I'll check out what that means because that'll tell me when and where it was made. So if anybody does know what B and B, anchor, lion, U means, please do tell me in the comments below. We've got this porcelain brooch which is signed with an N and then stamped with silver. So that's the lovers. You often see like people courting on these porcelain brooches. That one was £4 and that should get me say about £12 back I think. And then this is one of my favourites. So this, this is a pendant. Lovely colour blue. That's really nice blue. I very much like that. And this is also signed. Right. This is signed TLM Sterling. And that's Thomas something Mott, I think. And I've had one of his brooches before. Which I picked up for 50 pence and I sold for £40. That was a good one. Um, I think this cost me £2. And I reckon I should be able to get about £20 to £30 for that one. Because he's a very collectible kind of mink, that guy. 
fat guy. So, oops, sorry. Super duper happy with what I bought. Look at all my pretties, aren't they lovely? So nice. So, I've got a lot of listing to do. Uh, never mind. And what else? Oh, and also I sorted out my bedroom the other day and I chucked out, like, not chucked out, I'm donating a load of clothes. These bags here to charity shops and then that's the bag of clothes that I, is good enough for me to list there. And then that's some stuff I bought the other day. So I've got a ton of stuff to be doing. So that looks like that's what I'm going to be doing this, this weekend because I'm not going to see Carla this weekend. I'm going next weekend, hopefully. Yay. So that was fun. Um, quick say something weird. No, I can't think of anything. So anyway, I will leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed this little vlog. And again, welcome to any new subscribers that heard that I was good and then have watched me now and found out that I'm quite the contrary. Never mind. Sorry. You can always unsubscribe. It's okay. You don't have to watch me. It's fine. Okay. Anyway, so thank you all. That's your free jazz hand. And um, I shall see you again next time. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.